All right, welcome in. Happy Tuesday. This is the Cow Guy Close, and I am Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Thanks for tuning us in here today. All right, this is a good one. This is a, a little rich, if you ask me, but uh, I'm glad there was some pushback on this next story. The BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, well, he said America could dodge a retirement crisis by encouraging people to work for longer. You know, never mind the fact that he makes $27 million a year. He didn't care. But I digress, right? Uh, he raised that point that more Americans are retiring and the retirements are increasing in length. This, he claims, is having a massive impact on the country's retirement system, specifically the nation's Social Security offers, right, which are quickly running out of money. Well, I agree with that, and I would also say that they probably already have run out of money, and it's just a bunch of IOUs. But he went on and said, but I do think it's a bit crazy that our, that our anchor idea for the right retirement age, which is 65 years old, originates from the time of the Ottoman Empire. Well, here's the pushback. Labor economist Teresa Gilarducci, a renowned thought leader on U.S. retirement issues, slapped down Fink's suggestion in a recent interview with Bloomberg. She says, if you think, Mr. Fink, that people working longer, maybe just one or two years longer, will mean that people won't go into their old age without being downwardly mobile into a poverty after being a middle-class worker, or you think working longer will maintain people's living standards, you'll be wrong, she said. Here's why Gilarducci is against raising the retirement age. It's just not fair. Not everyone is living longer. Some people get sick, right? Some jobs are way more physical, too. And finally... Some of us are being forcefully retired, if you get my hint. My next guest is an expert in this field. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Craig Blanos. He's the CEO and uh, co-founder of the Wealth Management Group in Chicago. Thank you very much, uh, Craig, for being on. Interesting debate between those two. I mean, Larry Fink coming from his high horse of $27 million, He doesn't have to worry about retiring. Um, but uh, Gilarducci saying that, you know what, some people get sick, some people get fired, and some people have way more physical jobs. It's not really just that easy to say work a couple years longer. All right, Scott, at the end of the day, the truth always lies somewhere in between. It is not black and white when it comes to finance. And sure, I can scoff at Larry Fink's comments coming from his ivory tower. <laughs> but the reality is, let's be sincere, we need to be way less reliant on the government. Bottom free line. men and yeah. free women need to start taking care of themselves. And the message that shouldn't be lost here is if we spent, and he did say this, if we just spent one one hundredth of the time doing financial education as compared to all the time we spend on living longer, how impactful would that be? Because it's tough out there. This is the avalanche issue in American financial planning right now, and I'm on the front lines as a practitioner. So am I exaggerating? Um, nobody likes a good exaggeration more than I do. But am I exaggerating when I say that, say, if you're, if you're 50 years old, uh, maybe I'm 58. My, my Social Security has a high likelihood of not being there. Or am I, is, that, is that way out of bounds? You know, it was funny. So I'm at the gym this morning. Yes, I know you can't believe it. I actually have a gym member. <laughs> but a guy next to me goes, hey, Craig, I know you're on the radio all the time. I can't believe, Scott, this is perfect. He goes, what's this thing about Social Security going broke in 2033? And I just explained that there's not enough money. So the entire 2032 election will be nothing more than our entitlement system. And then Congress will pass new legislation to raise taxes in the spring legislation of 2030 under that new Congress. But here's the, the final point, Scott, is at the end of the day, no one is, people are just undersaved. People are underinvested. People are underplanned. And the struggle I have with a as a practitioner is this, Scott, if I can get people to stay employed for an additional two to three years, that's two to three years of additional savings. That's two to three years of additional compounding. That's two to three years of not having to touch the portfolio. That in turn extends the longevity a tremendous way. And the problem I'm having is once you become a certain age and check a certain demographic, you end up getting geo globally outsourced or a RIF. That's a reduction in force. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to accelerate their retirement plan because you're not going to be able to work as long as you had hoped to. Now that's Gerarducci's last comment. She says you're forcefully retired. Uh, it's not even your choice, number one. And I thought that interesting. And also, the, some of the jobs people do, if you're a care worker or something, you know, there are, there's heavy lifting. It's a lot more physical than a lot of other things. 
And then, you know, lastly, I mean, I, I think, as my dad would say, son, you know, the way you spend money, you're going to be scooping ice cream at haagen when you're 98 years old. That's probably going to be the case. And, you know, it, it, it is true. I, I think that ultimately the answer for, say, me or maybe some other folks out there will we'll probably work a little longer than maybe you want to, maybe a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's probably the best way either than just starting to save earlier if you're in your 40s or 30s. Right. You're going to have to probably tack on a few years or at least start to plan for that. You know, it's a whole new system. I mean, let's just say the obvious, because sometimes the obvious is deceptive. All of us are shaped by our experience. It's what we saw in our friends, our parents, our aunts and uncles. We defined that they retired at a certain age, so we should be allowed to retire at that same age. I got news. Life is tough out there. We all printed way too much money. Inflation is way too rampant. Life is way too expensive. There's nothing I can do to complain about it. All I can do is take measured intensity to solve for it. And that probably means without a company pension, being totally self-reliant, I've got to start budgeting, telling my money where it's supposed to go instead of wondering where it went. I've got to be more disciplined in how I save. I need to be a little bit more strategic and tactical in how I invest. And those small improvements at the margins will make a lifetime of difference in retirement. That's why I want people to get professional help, Scott. I agree. I agree. I mean, I used to do it myself. That's fantastic stuff. Great advice. And we'll see how long Mr. F uh, Mr. Fink ends up working. Probably a lot longer because he makes $27 million a year. But anyway, thanks for being on the show. Craig I'd stay engaged too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Thanks for being on, Craig. We'll see you again next week. Craig's uh, the CEO and co-founder of the Wealth Manager Group up in Chicago.